when you think about it, it's amazing how your mind works to turn my voice into trance, isn't it? I mean, even the act of listening right now, like you are. How that word, that speech, that voice that's just waves, that's just vibrations, becomes something you can interpret and understand is completely fascinating to me. Right now, you listen, and my vocal cords make this wonderful hum. My mouth makes all sorts of shapes. And somehow, somehow your ears are able to listen, to feel my words. Because you do feel them, don't you? You feel them in your ears, the way the sound hums, my voice, the tone of my speech. And that, that constant beat, each syllable of my words, makes its way to your mind processes inside your mind, turns into something so much more than what it is, becomes something significant, because your mind can understand and interpret each and every wave, every buzz of my voice that feels so good, and make it into something powerful inside your head. Perhaps right now, if you listen really intensely, intently, if you focus hard on the way that my voice feels, you'll feel the way your eardrum vibrates with my voice. Feel it in such a minute way, creating this pattern inside your head. Each word. But of course, it doesn't stay in your eardrum. No, like I said, it travels down to your mind, where it all becomes so much more. Did you know that we really only are conscious of a small portion of what our brain does? All the different electrical pulses going on inside our head, all the myriad of things that that amazing, misunderstood part of ourselves does. And so little of that is conscious. To become conscious of something inside of our minds, we have to feel it. We have to feel the pulse of it, the electric waves reaching the very outer layer of our mind. The cerebral cortex is only hmm, a few millimetres, really. And that is where our consciousness lies, right on the outside. And so somehow, somewhere, right now inside your brain, my words are becoming something that you're conscious of. All of those neural networks are firing, bouncing around inside your head from place to place, from memory to memory. Because our minds, they're not like photo albums, not like books. They're more like webs, all interconnected. And so each word plucks on a strand inside your head that connects to so many things. Things you're not conscious of right now. The first time you heard that word, let's say the word deeper. The first time you heard the word deeper was probably long, long ago lost to your conscious mind, but each time you've heard the word deeper, a new memory was formed, a new connection inside your head. When was the first time you heard me say the word deeper? Can you remember that? Perhaps you can consciously recall it, or perhaps you can't, but your mind does recall it. Somewhere in that vast expanse of neural network, that connection will be made and will fire and will take you, take you to exactly the place that deeper should take you. 
must take you will take you. And some of that will reach that outer layer, that cerebral cortex, and become something you can understand as deeper. That you can interpret as feeling the word deeper. And it will connect to that wonderful pathway that I'm constantly forging that does take you deeper. That place in your mind that's becoming so well-trodden now, isn't it? That wonderful network that becomes the feeling of trance inside you, that becomes hypnosis taking over your brain. Each time you draw, you train yourself, you train that neural network to fire a little more efficiently for me. When I say the word deeper, you go deeper, and it takes you deeper inside your mind, literally. Because, as I said, it's only that first layer, that cerebral cortex, that has your conscious thought. Perhaps you can even imagine right now how the changes in your brain state would be reflected on some kind of scan. How that outer layer of your mind that was firing off all the time, so busy, all those electrical currents all over your brain, how it slowly begins to go deeper, to go from that outer layer, that conscious layer, and go inward now. Go to the quiet and ancient parts of your mind. The parts that you can't control. The parts that you can't know. That you just are. And I speak to you so directly when I tell you to go deeper now. <laughs> That's good. Exactly like that. Perhaps you can almost feel that quiet death that I'm bringing you toward, that each layer of your mind slowly but surely begins to shut off as you go inward and down and down until it's just the still outer layer, wrapped, all quiet, protective of my time talking to that innermost part of your brain keeping you so safe inside, while I delve into those old reptilian parts, the parts of you that want to feast, want to fuck, the parts of you that are just guided by those most innate of impulses, the parts of you that I can stimulate, that I can agitate, and that I control. Yeah, that's right. Mmm, those parts of you, they light up like a Christmas tree <laughs> when I'm talking directly to them. They know me. They want me. You want me at your core, at your deepest part. You want to serve me. And your mind absorbs these words, these little lures that I give it toward deeper obedience. Absorbs it all up like a sponge in those quiet and ancient parts of yourself. Those are the parts that I train. Those are the parts that kick in so efficiently, so effectively, when I give you an instruction. It doesn't need to reach that outer layer, that cerebral cortex. <laughs> no, the deeper part of yourself is piloting your functions, working for me, serving me. Serving and knowing the pleasure of serving, because pleasure is so integral to that deepest self. Pleasure is what that deepest self craves. Safety, comfort, arousal, 
all of those things that that part craves so completely. I give those parts, and they keep coming back. You keep coming back. And it doesn't matter how that outer layer, that cerebral cortex, interprets what you do. It doesn't make a difference to the fact you're doing it. You're behaving as I wish you to behave. Because you've been programmed on that most deepest part, in the most pleasurable way. And you can't help but follow, but listen, but obey. <laughs> My obedient thing, in this quiet place where you listen attentively so wrapped in my control, this is who you are when everything is stripped away. But I can't keep you down in these depths forever, even if I slip my programming in so efficiently and effectively eventually, I have to let you think with that out a layer once again, don't I? I have to let you be conscious. So when you come back to that consciousness, understand this. Come back up understanding in such a natural, easy way that you are only perceiving such a small part of who you are and that I can see the rest of you so clearly a puppet on a string for me. You might not be able to control that unconscious part, but I can. <laughs> remember that. And perhaps that's all you need to remember. Perhaps that and this knowledge that you're only perceiving such a small slice of who you are is what you'll come back up with and what you'll remember from this trance. That's my obedient, docile creature. <laughs> and so slowly feel yourself inhabiting that mind again, coming out from that most deepest part, that core of self, beginning to feel those neurons firing on the outside of your mind again, that conscious thought returning as you inhabit the rest of your brain, as your body and the room comes back to you too, and you come all the way up and awake, feeling wonderful in five, four, three, two, one. Up, up, up. There you go. Such an obedient thing for me. Mm, I'll speak to you soon. <laughs>